Hello, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, I want to have a look at the MBK-161 from 1943, which is the first ship that you assemble in the ongoing Operation Shipyard. It is a Soviet armored gunboat at battle rating 2.3, and I think that this is a pretty hefty thing to face when you are new to naval forces, to which I will just come in a moment. Gaijin was nice to me and they gave me a two week test drive for it so I could test it excessively. So obviously I had to make a video and I'm actually a bit sorry for being late, um, at least for my standards. But nevertheless, let's have a look at what this uh, beauty can do. And so if you're bored by my rambling, you can see its performance in the ongoing battle that I wanted to show you. But I wanted to have a look at the armor and then you can see that the hull has a distributed armor scheme. The very uh, tip of the bow has no armor, first bulkhead is 14 millimeters, 12 uh, millimeter of side plating and that is pretty much the first compartment. The second compartment is then the main citadel uh, which is protected by 52 millimeters. That is quite a lot of rolled homogeneous armor since this renders most uh, high explosive shells pretty much immune but uh, I think versus armor piercings, especially at long range, especially if you angle the ship, that's also quite a tough nut to crack. 52 millimeters, that's quite a lot. And the stern armor plating is 18 millimeters. Then we have no direct bulkhead, but then the citadel bulkhead is 30 millimeters. So you can angle a little bit, but you should angle it in such a way that the rear plating covers in terms of line of sight also the... Uh, stern plating where or the stern bulkhead where the front plating has its uh, armor values I sadly cannot see um, I tried it but I couldn't figure it out maybe also 30 millimeter doesn't matter deck is 12 18 and 12 millimeters respectively again and then the cunning tower or the bridge is 60 millimeters all around again very boxy you can angle it and then the top is 40 millimeters. Then those T-34 uh, 76 millimeter turrets have actually armor ranging from 45 to 40 millimeters all around. So they are also pretty tough to crack. The next thing is that the ammo racks, if you will, are directly below the turrets. And they are also protected by the main uh, citadel protection armor belt. The next thing, if we stay here with this x-ray, we can see that there are quite a few guns on this ship. We're talking about two 76mm F-34 cannons. Their mass velocity penetration and damage output is obviously way less than the 85mm versions on the uh, battle rating 3.0 armored patrol boats, but this is also pretty good. You still have to get used to them, but the front turret in particular has some weird stuff going on when it comes to just pointing the gun on target. First of all, the gun barrel is easily uh, able to go here through the foundation here of those heavy machine guns. But it cannot fire forward because not just is there in the mortar, but it can shoot through the mortar. But it's here is the wave breaker and the uh, structure of the bow that is in its way. But also on the side, it goes through then the safety railing. But there, for example, it still um, respects here those air intakes for the engines or whatever. And the same goes here for the rear turret, which also has some decent firing angles, but here the safety boat is in its way. And sometimes for no reason whatsoever, your aiming jumps up and the next moment it's totally fine. And it's not because you have buoyancy to one side or the other or the, the ship lifts, lists to one side or the other, either, either by buoyancy or by a maneuver. No, 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 it's sometimes completely random. So the next thing is that there seem to be some armor holes for no apparent reason and uh, that then sometimes lets you suffer. In the battle that I'm showing you I didn't really get shot all that much so I'm showing you the gun performance but uh, it's really weird. 
When it comes to anti-aircraft firepower, we have three heavy machine guns, which are pretty nice, also versus patrol boats, especially if you go bowing. Then we also have this 45mm, which at first glance for a single shot cannon doesn't really uh, sound all that great with muscle velocity, rate of fire, etc. But it has surprisingly good accuracy and it adjusts after every shot, which, which cannot be said from the 37mm 70k automatic cannon. Um, that also has some overheat issues, unlike the German 37mm or uh, the 40mm Bofors that can fire for much longer before they overheat. So there is quite a big array of uh, weaponry, which is nice. You can switch between them. The 76mm also have some very potent high explosive shell. And then there is the AP shell. And the AP shell is a bit strange because uh, it is, after all, an AP HEBC round, but it only gets useful when the opposition has armor. But when it comes to facing enemies, once you go to the ranges, the likes of of a thousand to two thousand meters we are just below 70 or 60 millimeters respectively while we have some nice uh, angles of attack normalization or angle normalization values of this shell which are not apparent on the stat card it still has trouble to go through some turrets or through armor of other soviet uh, armored river patrol boats well then the 85mm is to be preferred. The 45mm also has a huge variety of shells for in total. We have a stock HE shell, then we have an improved HE shell that has uh, more high explosive, nearly four times more high explosive, but it has a very low mass velocity uh, going from 760 meters per second down to 335 meters per second. Then we also have an APHE shell for the 45 millimeters, but I don't really use this. Uh, and then also even a base use high explosive shell, which is just a little bit overkill, but I would still go for the stock high explosive. 37 millimeter is a default only belt, which has three high explosive and two armor, pierce, two armor piercing belts. Uh, again, it overheats quite often and the 12.7s also have a nice belt. Overall, very useful ship to have. It is a full-fledged premium. Um, when you then later on look at the results that I get at the end of the battle, I do not get the premium modifiers because this is for me a test drive. So please keep that in mind when you later look at the civil lines because they would be double the next thing is that the speed of the ship is rather slow, so with only uh, roughly 25 kilometers per hour, you're not really going to win any sort of speed contest within uh, naval forces. So you never can really fight for the cap directly by capping it, but you can support your faster ships by gunning down uh, the threats to them. Um, let's quickly talk here about the mortar. It looks tempting. But the rate of fire is poor, the ballistics are poor, the range is limited and it takes up to 12 seconds before the mortar grenades go off. I exactly got one kill so far in all the battles that I played and this by somebody not really noticing me be being behind the island and yes, if you get a kill like that, it's hilarious, but you get probably a hundred normal kills with gunfire before you get a mortar grenade kill. So it's not really worth talking about. Other than this, the ship is slow but steady and sturdy. It might have some gaps in the armor. There are great battles. And again, it shows compression because this ship can face 3.3 ships. And there are some nasty beasts out there at this battle rating. A very quick with a heavy armament that can easily uh, overcome your armor and then well if you get a full down tier you face 1.3 battle rating ships that is just absurd that is obscene and i absolutely do not approve of that that is something that makes the ship just uh, completely misplaced again the compression if you get it up by battle rating then it should work normally if it would work uh, like you would expect it to work, then I would say 
give it a battle rating of at least 3.0 and the other 3.0 armored uh, river patrol boats the soviet ones should have 3.3 3.7 ex etc and then the destroyers should begin at 5.0 and not 3.7 or something like this but hey two battle rating steps lower than comparable soviet ships but what do you expect from a uh, event marathon reward ship with premium status yeah it's an ongoing problem nevertheless let's have a look at the results for this match again the civil line income would be double than it is right now for 14 ship kills and two air targets we got 72,000 civil lines it would be roughly 130,000 if you calculate it through with the awards etc under 5000 vehicle modification research points that's not really all that much but again we got very comfortable first place in this ship it is a beauty it can do a great many things when it comes to slaughtering the enemy team but after a while it gets boring i would prefer the 85 millimeters the firing angles are a bit off and then there is also the fact that the motor isn't really all that reliable anti-aircraft firepower armor sturdiness the rest of it is really there and having said that that's it for me today so thanks for watching thanks for listening i hope you enjoyed this video please give it a like if you did subscribe if you want to see more and as usual let me know in the comment section what you would uh, think about this ship and how do you play it if you have it how to fight it and as usual we'll see each other on the battlefields in the skies and on the waves of war thunder